Greetings, I'm the dentist. Welcome back to Dent Agenda. This is Chapter 3, Pediatric Dentistry. In this tutorial, we will discuss palpal sequelae following trauma. These are the points we're going to cover. Damage to the pulp can occur as a result of many factors as disruption of the apical vessels, exposure of the pulp by crown or root fracture, hemorrhage, and inflammation of coronal pulp resulting in strangulation. Pulp death. Pulp death or necrosis. Remember that no response to vitality testing indicates damage to the nerve supply of the tooth, but not necessarily the blood supply. Therefore, following trauma, you should assess vitality in the light of symptoms, tooth color, mobility, presence of buccal swelling, and radiographic evidence. Except where a tooth has been replanted, it is best to adopt wait-and-see approach if in doubt about vitality. When pulp death has occurred, Subsequent treatment depends upon whether the apex is closed or open, as we have discussed in details in the previous tutorial. Root Canal Treatment When the root apex is mature, you follow the conventional root canal treatment approach. Now to the root canal treatment, in the immature root apex. In that case, the achievement of an apical seal is difficult since the tooth has an open apex, and the treatment should aim to produce apexification, meaning that inducing a calcific barrier at the apex of a non-vital tooth with the incomplete root formation. Under a rubber dam, the necrotic pulp should be extubated and the working length is set 1-2 to two millimeters shorter than the radiographic apex. Narrow files are used in order to negotiate any undercuts. Then, that canal should be filled with the radio-opaque non-sitting calcium hydroxide to the apex and sealed. This calcium hydroxide filling should be replaced every three months until a calcific apical barrier is detectable by gentle probing with a paper point. The average time for a calcific barrier to be formed at the apex is about 9 months. Then, the canal can be filled with a permanent root canal filling. But because of the canal width, a large gutta-percha point should be used, or a conventional point placed upside down can do. This should be warmed in a flame before pressing into place, and then lots of laterally condensed points are used to obtain a good seal. Alternatively, Thermoplasticide gadaperta can be another option. Note that some advocate mineral trioxide aggregate or MTA as an alternative to calcium hydroxide, allowing obturation to be achieved more quickly and over fewer visits. Root resorption. Dental resorption is defined as the loss of dental heart tissues as a result of clastic activities. Root resorption in primary dentition is a normal physiological process. Unless it occurs prematurely, then it can be considered pathological. On the other hand, root resorption of permanent teeth is a pathological process, which if left untreated may result in premature loss of the affected tooth. Depending on the resorption location in relation to the root or root canal surface, root resorption may be classified as internal or external. Internal root resorption includes inflammatory and replacement subtypes. And external root resorption includes inflammatory, replacement, cervical, surface and transient breakdown. There are three phases of the root resorption process, initiation, resorption, and repair.
Root resorption commonly occur after traumatic injuries, as avulsion, luxation, intrusion or extrusion, which we have discussed in details in the previous tutorials. Internal resorption is associated with chronic pulpal inflammation that results in resorption of the dentine from the pulpal surface. It is progressive, therefore the pulp needs to be carefully extubated and then dressing of calcium hydroxide can be placed to arrest the resorption and once controlled a gutta percha filling may be placed. If perforation has occurred the prognosis is decreasing considerably and in that case you need to raise a flap, remove the granulation tissue and directly repair. Here are the main types of root resorption. External, that includes surface, inflammatory, replacement, cervical and apical breakdown. Internal root resorption that includes replacement and inflammatory. External replacement root resorption usually happens secondary to irreversible damage to the cementum, leading to ankylosis, usually associated with high percussion note, or what we refer to as metallic sound on percussion upon examination. Replacement resorption is usually progressive, meaning that it cannot be arrested and it is not influenced by endodontic therapy and eventually leads to the root being replaced by bone. Radiographically, you can see irregularities and pits on the outer surface of the root with adjacent radiolucency. Internal inflammatory resorption is frequently related to pulp necrosis and the presence of infection, so it can often be halted by appropriate endodontic treatments. Etiological factors of internal root resorption may include trauma, caries, periodontal infections, excessive heat generated during restorative procedures on the vital teeth, vital root resection, anachoresis, meaning bacteria present in blood or lymph would be attracted to the dental pulp following trauma or operative procedure that produced inflammation without causing pulp exposure. Orthodontic treatments with uncontrolled forces, cracked teeth or idiopathic dystrophic changes to the normal pulp. Pulp obliteration Calcific metamorphosis or pulp canal obliteration is the pulp response to trauma, characterized by rapid pronounced deposition of mineralized tissue in the root canal space along the internal walls that fills most of the pulp system, leaving it narrowed and restricted. Obliteration of the pulp canal space can be classified as partial pulp canal obliteration or total pulp canal obliteration. Teeth with pulp canal obliteration usually present with a yellowish or greyish discoloration. It occurs in 6 to 35 percent of luxation type injuries. Prophylactic endodontic treatment is not necessary as pulp necrosis occurs in only 13 to 16 percent of cases. A high rate of success up to 80 percent has been reported for subsequent root canal treatments despite a hairline narrow or no root canal detectable on the x-ray. And there you have it all. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'd like to have you here for more videos. And follow us on Instagram at Dent Agenda for extra tips and tricks.